it's easier to say no, to walk away, to go on with our lives, to focus on our own problems. But what would happen if we said yes? Yes, I will open my arms and my heart and my home to those who have nowhere else to go. Yes, I will be disrupted. Yes, I want the ones who have been let down, abandoned, wounded, looking for a second chance. Yes, my family can change the world. I don't know that the vast majority of the population understands how many children are right here in our backyard that need something right now. We have children right here in every city in Texas that are living in out-of-home placements. And so they're in institution settings, they're in places where they're being cared for, but they really need a family because the family is the curative factor. Relationship is the curative factor. Our family comes in many colors, and I mean that literally. We have five children in our home currently. We have a total of 12 children um, that belong to myself and Mr. Crenshaw. I come from a single home, you know, and I just noticed, like, the only thing that was missing out of, out of my life was, like, someone just to be there to show that they care about me. I myself went through some things as a youth that I wish it this was there for me. I wish that I had the opportunity to be with someone that, you know, would have taken care of me in what I feel would have been a better way. So we put in our application and it took a couple of months because we had to go through a lot of background stuff, but we we, we got approved. And once we once we were approved, we just we never stopped doing what we're doing. Well we have two girls, uh, older. And then we have Nicholas, who is five currently. And um, we had considered doing adoption early on, but we moved quite a bit. And so when we got here, our daughters were older and we thought we were too old. And so when we found out we were pregnant with Nick, then we thought, well, let's look into this again. And there was an interest. And so that's when we got interested in foster care. I've been married for about 10 years. We have had kids from all different stages and walks of life. We started when we were 22 years old. Um, we thought that we would want to do foster care before we had kids. And so we just decided to um, take one child between the ages of three and six just to try it out. And um, now, 10 years later, we've had almost 40 kids. We've had from newborn to 18. We've had kids that have had multiple um, different disabilities pretty much all different kinds of stuff, and it has just changed our life. There are children right here in our communities that, at no fault of their own, have gone through a life of abuse, neglect, trauma, um, and then they're brought, to, brought into the system. They're scared, they're confused, and what they really, really just need is, is a loving home, some support, um, a family to be there for them. And there are times that I hear of children that, you know, there's no foster homes available and all the child placing agencies are, are working to find um, a place for a child. CPS is working to find a place for a child, but there's a, a shortage of foster and adoptive homes. When I speak to new families that are uh, coming into this field is one is to thank them, first of all, because we need people to step up. Two is to really evaluate their readiness to have their entire world turned upside down in great ways and in challenging ways. And so the readiness to invite someone else's child into your home, whether you have them for a day, a week, a month, or for a lifetime, is a critical change. And so that level of preparedness, I think, is a really important feature too. But mostly, I think it's to let families know that um, they are enough. The hardest part, oh, you know, I'll tell you the hardest part. The hardest part is actually remembering to fill out that paperwork. <laughs> it really is sometimes. It's like, oh, okay, I forgot, we gotta do this. It's all the same. It's just like your children. They are your children. They're in your home. They're your children. So the same way you would, you know, take care of your children, the same way you would, you know, pour into your own children, these are your children. You would act the exact same way. You have to realize that these kids come from abused places, beat up places. So if you got a good support system that's let them know it's all right, if you're not around, they still speaking positive into their life, you know what I'm saying, let them know 
it, it just becomes easier. Your job becomes easier. They become more comfortable, adjust faster when everyone's around with a smile so they understand like their situation has been very positive now. Oh, just like parenting, there's some days where everything goes wrong and at the end of the day, I've crabbed at a kid and I've had to say I'm sorry. Or you have five, to be five places all at once and somebody spills their milk as you're walking out the door and you gotta stop and clean that up. Um, so those things are hard, but um, it makes you stronger as you put your trust in, in the Lord that he, he knows what he's doing. And CPS has been wonderful. They're really out there to help the kids and so it's nice to support them. I, I think that the kids, they don't, they aren't looking for the perfect parents. They're just looking for somebody to be there to provide for them during that, that in-between time. And, uh, you know, not being the perfect parent probably helps them out a little bit because when you have to look at them and say, you know, I shouldn't have done that, I'm sorry, it teaches them that that's okay to make a mistake and, and to go back and say, I'm sorry, and fix it. Sometimes it can be hard with never knowing the outcome and never knowing the plan. Um, we take kids with the plan of reunification so we work towards helping them back to the home. And sometimes that's something that's really rewarding and wonderful. And sometimes it's really hard. We aren't the ones that get to choose if they're gonna go home. We aren't the ones that get to choose their plan. And so there are times that we disagree or we don't you know, fully feel that this is the safe or best place, but we have to know that the system is doing their best just like we are. And so our plan is just to help them as long as we can. And I think that's probably the hardest part, not knowing how long it will be or what, what will happen to them. These children already have several labels that's been placed upon them. So when you accept a placement, leave that fostering piece at the door and recognize you are just parenting a child. Unfortunately, that child has experienced some, some significant traumas that you probably can't relate to, and that's okay. But look at them as a child and say you, you're committed and be committed to working with them. I firmly believe being a foster or adoptive parent is something that you do because you want to give a child a better life than perhaps where they came from. But I also recognize that it's a service. Our children are not a product, but it's a service because it takes time to parent them. It takes time to have that trust established. Um, it takes time for them to even feel safe in their new home. We once looked at it like they need us, but in reality, we needed them. And I pray they can always look back on the Christians and truly say our heart was in it, we love what we did, and we did it for them. So then they'll go out and do it for the other ones. I, I just want everybody, you, the children to know, you know what, mom and dad started this, let's never let it end, you know? They, they opened their doors to many, many, many children, and we, we pray, we pray, which I have no doubt it'll happen, that our children continue to do the same thing. Continue to keep your door open, keep your, your kitchen, your stove hot, and ready to feed somebody, you know? We just want that to continue. It's, I don't even know how to really put it in words. I'd have to think of the right words, but it's been a huge blessing to us. We've, get, we've gotten to meet, you know, obviously different kids have come through the house. We've got to meet their families to a certain degree, some of them. Um, I think it's bonded us more. I, I would say we've been married 22 years. Is that the right number? Yeah. And we're, you know, I, I think that we're probably in the best place we've ever been in our marriage. And our kids are stronger for it. Though they go through the sadness, they're not parents, like especially our 18-year-old. She's not a parent, and so this, those little kiddos that come in are her siblings, and so she's protective of them. It's a neat to see her work through those emotions of um, learning to trust CPS, the system that's in place, and that it's, it all actually really works if we all work together. I would say that it's well worth it. It's amazing to see, um, be able to meet the kids and really understand the people that are in the system. The, the children, the parents, the families that you meet are changed my life and I think it's well worth it. You're stepping up to change the life of a child. You're, you're helping society. You're, you're taking a bigger role in this world. These children that don't have families, they, they weren't born into this world to be in CPS care. Um, but if 
you are able to step up, if, if you have the, the right support system, if you have the resources, if you have the right mindset, and you can step in and help a child, I think knowing that you're changing the future for them, you may be setting them on a different path, supporting them, and knowing that that's gonna make a difference in the end. We are the ones who have been called to take the road less traveled, because that's how we make the world a little more beautiful. We are the ones who give far more than we receive, and in so doing, receive far more than we ever expected or deserved. There is an overwhelming need that grows with every passing year. Kids all over are hurting, desperate, abused, and while some people may turn away, or stay blind to the reality we are facing. We say yes.